It's well known that lithium batteries do not like heat. In fact, most battery experts recommend that they never be put in an environment hotter than 120 degrees. So, can a lithium battery being used as a secondary or house battery be mounted underneath the hood of a vehicle where it gets really hot? In this video, we're gonna be doing some testing and answer that question once and for all. We need a secondary battery in our vehicle to power our fridge that's in the back, some camp lights, and to charge our many camera batteries. A lithium battery would be the absolute best choice for doing this job. However, like I just said, they hate to be kept in a very hot environment. Unfortunately, in our application, the only place we could put a secondary battery is under the hood. We simply don't have room anywhere else. We're going to put this lithium battery to the test by subjecting it to a wide variety of driving scenarios and temperature ranges. And at the end, I'll give you my conclusion. Can a lithium battery be placed in the high heat produced underneath the hood of a vehicle and still perform safely and effectively? From the start, we knew that just putting the unprotected battery under here was never going to work. It can easily get 160 to 170 degrees under here. So we first put a blanket of insulation around it. Starting with half inch thick foam insulation and then covering it up with this quarter inch thick foil backed bubble insulation. This went on the four sides and the bottom. Insulating the top just wasn't possible because of the charger and all the rest of this stuff up here and because of the limited amount of space we have. We also placed two temperature sensors right up against the battery behind the insulation. One on this side, just maybe six inches away from that super hot exhaust manifold and one on this side between the battery and the fender. We placed a third sensor right here out in the open to get the overall under the hood temperature. For a secondary battery, we basically have two choices, an AGM deep cycle lead acid battery or a lithium. So why would we go through all the hassle of trying to run a lithium battery in a high heat environment? Well, they have some very appealing characteristics. We have found that the lithium charges up to 25% faster than the AGM using our Red Arc 20 amp DC to DC charger. Lithium is lighter. A lithium battery has a much longer lifespan. This is warranted for 12 years, while a typical AGM is what, three, maybe four years? The best thing about a lithium battery though it has more amp hours available for use. An AGM battery like this one can only be consistently drained down to 50% of its overall capacity to keep it healthy and safe. So a battery like this rated at 72 amp hours is really only a 36 amp hour battery. A lithium battery on the other hand can be drained down to almost 0% and still stay healthy. So a 75 amp hour battery really is a 75 amp hour battery. Now there is some controversy among battery experts saying exactly how low you can regularly discharge a lithium battery and keep it healthy. Many say you can drain it all the way down and others say it's best to not drain it down below 10 or 20 percent. Regardless, it still has more available power than the same size AGM. Now for the testing. We started out testing under normal driving conditions, a moderate outside air temperature and normal driving speeds. Okay, for the last hour or so, we've been driving down a highway, 60, 65 miles an hour. The outside temperature is 81 degrees. The under the hood is 97 and a half or so. The hot side of the battery is 91 and a half. The cold side is about 83 and a half. Okay, well we've been off the highway for quite a while now onto some gravel roads. We cut our speed in half or, or more than half actually 
Uh, outside temperature is still 81 degrees. Um, under the hood, it's gotten up to 116.6. Hot side of the battery is right around 96 degrees. The cold side is 91 degrees. So it's, it's getting a little warm. So for the last hour or so, we've been on a path where we our speed is down to around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, and the under the hood temperature did go up quite a bit. We're at a little over 135 degrees right now. Um, the hot side of the battery is right around 101. And the cold side is right around 100. So things are heating up a little bit, but they're still well below that 120 degree barrier that uh, we don't want to reach so things are looking pretty good the insulation seems to be doing its job however up till now we've been testing under favorable conditions not too hot outside enough air flowing through the engine compartment to keep the heat down and the engine not working that hard in essence we were babying it then we spent a week exploring Escalante National Monument in southern Utah it was still early enough in the year where the outside temperatures weren't really that hot. I think probably the hottest it got was maybe 85. On this trip, we did spend quite a bit of time uh, driving very slow on very rough terrain. So the temperature under the hood did get up there quite a ways. And on a few occasions, the battery did get a little bit above that 120 degree mark. It still took a charge and powered our fridge just fine but we began realizing that we were getting very close to the limit of what this battery will put up with so next we wanted to test it under our normal driving conditions hot weather loaded down with gear and slow speed crawling so we went to moab utah in the middle of july over a hundred degrees in the shade and almost 100 miles crawling along the Rim Rocker Trail at an average speed of 10 miles an hour. It was a very long, hot day. Well, the battery got hot. Really hot. Over 160 degrees under the hood and the battery temperatures got way over that 120 degree threshold. The battery got so hot that the internal battery management system tripped. Now this prevented the battery from taking a charge from our DC to DC charger, protecting it from a potentially catastrophic failure. It still provided power to the fridge, but it was not accepting any charge into it. That night, after things had a chance to cool down, it did resume accepting a charge and seemed to work fine for the rest of our trip after we got out on, onto some roadways where we could get some air flowing underneath the hood. Something that we learned that day was the insulation works fine for sudden or short-term spikes of under the hood heat, but over the long term, the heat does migrate through that insulation. So once the battery gets hot, it stays hotter for a longer period of time because of the insulation. On our trips, we tend to subject our vehicles to extreme conditions. We have to have equipment and systems that can handle whatever we throw at them. After this latest test, we became very concerned about having a lithium battery under the hood. During all of our testing, we were in contact with a representative and the engineers at the company that produces this battery. We continually supplied them with all the data and our information during the testing. They thought what we were doing was a fantastic case study and the readings and precautions we were taking was a great way to test the feasibility of this application. When we sent them our latest extreme test results, this is what we heard back. I checked in with our engineers on this issue. They say the absolute worst thing you can do to a lithium battery is to keep it at full charge at high temperatures. So that's why that internal safety switch tripped. So the battery will deteriorate much quicker in these conditions. But they also noted 
that it is potentially a serious safety concern. Like I mentioned, these conditions increase the risk of shorts and swelling, both of which greatly increase the risk of fire. The last thing we want is for any harm to come to you or your equipment. So if those are the temperature readings you are getting from the battery, then we cannot recommend strongly enough that you do not continue to operate the battery in these conditions. I'm happy the battery seems to have thus far survived these extreme conditions, especially with it operating so far out of its safety parameters. But the risk of battery failure will increase with use. So there you have it folks. Definitely not the outcome we were hoping for. But now we know for certain that it's not safe to have a lithium battery under the hood of our vehicle. And it's a shame too. The maker of this battery, Electrovolt, really stands behind their products and has excellent customer service. We can't thank them enough for sticking with us during this test and providing us with their expertise on the battery. This battery is going to be put to good use in our glamper project where it'll live out its 12 years of warranty under much more favorable conditions. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Now I am not completely going to give up on the thought of having a lithium battery mounted under here. This is my new idea. We encapsulate a slightly smaller lithium battery in a box that's lined with that foam insulation, but it'll, it will allow for an air gap between the insulation and the battery, creating some airflow. To get that air, we can run a hose from the bottom of that box we make up to the front uh, by the radiator, or we could plumb it into the engine air box. Then on top of the box have a, a vent, maybe even have a thermostat controlled fan. It's kind of sucking that air through there. I gotta take a video of Max. He's back there on top of the refrigerator thinking that he's king of cool. 